getting into the venue. It is dark and early. This is not my cup of tea. This is my first time attending the Northwest Largest Garage Sale in Ridgefield, Washington. Two of my fellow vintage resellers, Sarah of Shorty's Eclectic Vintage and Andra of Rose and Rain Vintage, and I bought early bird tickets to this event. So it is 7 a.m. and the doors just opened. This is the first booth space that we went to. They had some really nice Mexican pottery here. I love the colors of this bowl. I didn't get the price though, unfortunately. A little something about me is that I usually don't wake up until about 8 or 8.30 in the morning. This little Italian relish veggie tray is so cute with the rabbit. It'd be really darling at Easter time. I am more of a night owl and usually go to sleep between 11 and midnight. I also don't sleep through the night, so I do a lot of YouTube watching between the hours of 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. when I can't sleep. I didn't catch the price on this Italian pottery vase, but it's beautiful. I'm blessed to be able to rarely have to use an alarm, but on this occasion, mine went off at 5 a.m. Yes, oh my gosh. How much is that one? 30. That's a cool wall hanging right there. Oh, Sarah spotted it. Cue the penguin ice bucket music. Laurel Caldwell from Left Coast Revivals has a funny joke about always seeing the penguin ice bucket. It's almost like a Where's Waldo game in her videos. If you don't watch her channel, you need to. She's amazing. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I like that at the back. This one's pretty. Really pretty. The girls and I left at 6 a.m. for the 45-minute drive up to Washington, so I'm running on about three to four hours of sleep at this moment. I absolutely love Mexican pottery. That Talavera compote is gorgeous. Then I spotted this darling little Mexican dove pin cushion, and I just had to have it. Do they have a price on it? It's beautiful. 80, yes. It's a cute little pin cushion doll. How much is that and, one? And it's a music box. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> you don't realize how much stuff you have that you're still. How much is this guy? 10. 10. Oh, it's like a little Andra yeah. almost bought this little brass cricket, but then she realized it lost its antenna. How much for the brass guy? Uh, five bucks. How much was it? Five? Yeah. Aww. Here's my little haul from this booth. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? It's just really cool. I absolutely love the snowflake Pyrex dish in this color. I have the black and white one. I was watching Abigail's Artful Abodes video of this same event and she purchased those three Mikasa blue bowls. If you don't watch her channel, you should check her out. She's another Pacific Northwest vintage reseller from Paulsville, Washington. She's really great. This vendor had a lot of Bennett Welsh and Robert Maxwell style pottery. I was reading a blog about Robert Maxwell the other day. He is considered the most prolific and versatile potter of his era. The similarity between his work and Treasure Craft's pottery craft division can be really confusing. His business merged with Treasure Craft for about six months, but unfortunately it didn't work out and he lost all his slip cast molds to them. So the pottery craft line that closely mimics his work is not actually his and his molds were never used. The marking of both the pottery lines was routinely done in paper labels. So if those are gone, you may never know whose work you have. Those are very interesting little brass figures. But anyway, Robert Maxwell did not make any pottery craft items. The website I learned this from has pictures of his labels and signatures. So if you're interested in getting his work, it would not be a bad idea to get acquainted with the different signatures and labels. 
I was absolutely in love with this hand-painted tagine. The blue and the white, it's so beautiful. I could have just purchased it just as a decorative item to sit in my kitchen, but I really have no room at this point. I absolutely loved playing with Playmobil toys when I was little, and I also purchased them for my son and daughter, and $10 for vintage is amazing. Those things are very expensive even to buy new right now. What a beautiful antique photo album. Beautiful. Yeah, that's really cool. This is, it's probably worth every penny, but it's it's 325 because it's wow. Robert at Hart, so he's a well-known. Uh-huh. But it's new. It's 2004. So there's an artist to keep your eye out for, Robert Eichholt. Here's some examples of his work and his signatures. Oh, there's two sets. Does that say 250 yeah. That's when if that's worth that. Saving for Andy. <laughs> that's cute. Oh, that's cute. little incense burner. I was referring to Andy from All Put Together. She also has a channel, which I'm sure you probably watch. She's amazing. And we were going to meet her up there at the Northwest largest garage sale and then we are going to go have lunch afterwards. So I was saving those for Andy, but she did not buy them. She said they were not as good quality as what she buys. I'm bummed I didn't buy this box because those little stickers on the top came off really easily. I didn't realize it could be worth so much. Here's yet another example of something I did not realize could be worth so much. $399? And then $49.95? How, how is it such a different spread? I couldn't find any sold comps, so maybe it's just that people will ask what they will ask, and they will get what they will get. What is that? Beautiful. Is it Cloisonne? Yeah. Think. And then how much did you pay? $12. Sweet! That's an interesting paperweight. Looks like oh, yeah. it's in resin. Little did I know that this Norway troll was going to be a theme for today. Stay tuned and you'll see what I'm talking about later in the video. I thought this was a really beautiful clay cooking pot. Then I realized you can buy these brand new on Etsy with your choice of what you'd like color-wise for only $45. I don't know how much this one was though but I don't need one, so I didn't buy it. I do need ornaments, however, for my antique spaces, and I thought these little embroidered felt ones were just darling for $2 each. Love Hermie the Elf from the Rudolph production that I grew up watching. Cute little vintage reindeer. It's not a Rudolph, though. His nose isn't red. I love this little Cupid doll elf, too. So cute. I ended up getting this vintage ornament for myself. If you're still watching for the haul portion of this video, then I'll explain why. I thought this was an interesting and beautiful find. They don't even know what it is, and neither do I. I even looked it up on Google Lens and I couldn't figure it out. So if you do, please let us know in the comments. I liked this either sculpture or wall hanging, but I almost knocked it over when I was looking for the price, so I don't know how much that one cost. This was a cute little brass dish with a lid. I ended up asking how much this little brass sailboat was, and it was $20, and I noticed that pretty much everything in this booth was priced for retail, not for um, a vintage reseller to get any profit out of, so I passed on everything here. This is kind of a cool tiki punch bowl set. Look at that! $5, huh? I used to make chalkware Santas with my mother in the late 80s and early 90s and even early 2000s. So I'm always wondering if I'm going to stumble upon one when I'm looking at all this vintage Christmas. These little boho looking trivets are right up my alley. Look who I ran into. Hi! Where are we? We are at the Northwest Largest Garage Sale, and it is an early morning always, <laughs> but amazing. I have filled up my whole Good job. Yeah. 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 Yep. So I'm going to backpack full. All right. <laughs> so, if you need one of these, you can get one. I know. Yeah, I know. 
If you don't already watch Andy from All Put Together, that is she. And she was showing me her cool Hulkin bag that I probably should invest in one of those because they all look pretty cool. Oh, it's gorgeous. How vibrant those colors are. <laughs> I really, really wanted to get these for only $12, those two spoons and the bowl. But my problem was I was afraid someone would break the spoons. So I was like, I'll probably never use them. So I don't really need them, but they're so cool. I thought that these were really interesting and they would be fun to have, especially if you had a beach theme. And apparently they're worth a lot of money too. So I probably should have picked them up just for the fun factor of them. Alas, I did not. So when you're out thrifting, keep your eyes peeled for Perry Gargano work. That's really interesting. Yeah, wow. <laughs> what do you use a bowl like that for? You have to be so careful you don't break. Well, this is just, Oh, it's separate. Yeah. Both that woman and I thought that that figure was, was frosted glass, but it, it was just plastic. I thrifted some of these for 99 cents for the pair. That is I was definitely drunk on junk by this time. That slag glass lamp was sold. It's so beautiful. I wonder how much it's sold for. I thought this little Italian Murano footed glass dish was just beautiful. I would have liked to have purchased it just for myself as a treasure, but at this point I'm really trying to purge stuff. This mirror is magnificent. I just love the frame on it. Gorgeous. Love me some Scooby-Doo, just my generation. They were only asking $10 for this tray made with butterfly wings, the iridescence of butterfly wings. I should have picked this up. My friend Emily from Biome Vintage was selling one for $95 last time I talked to her. I should have grabbed these as well for only $10. I thought they were super cool. It's really pretty. Oh, there's a pretty big dent. Oh, yeah. Is it just me, or do you freak out when you see wooden candle holders too? I feel like I'm going to burn the house down if I were going to use that. I love these Quimperware dishes. I've seen them before, and I didn't pick them up. And next time, I think I will grab some if I see them. This is a beautiful box. Both Andy and Andra were buying boxes left and right. Apparently, they're huge sellers. I should start buying boxes, I think. I thought that $18 was a great price for this hand-carved wood basket, but then I realized it was in some pretty poor condition, so I decided not to get this one. These two beautiful art leather purses were both from the 1920s and they were $50 each. I would assume you might find something like these at an estate sale, but can you imagine if you found those at the Goodwill or some thrift store? What a find. I've been looking for a brass cricket box for a little while, but I don't want to pay $20. It's like a cat pig giraffe. What do you think it is? Please let me know in the comments. We had these same two bowls for my kids. My son, who was born in 1991, used these. My grandfathers, both one worked for Kellogg's and one worked for Post, so we got those bowls for free. Aw, this reminds me of my little Volkswagen Bug I drove when I was 16 years old. Here's the only picture I have of me with my Bug.
was an interesting brutalist sculpture. It reminds me of the Flock of Seagulls by C. Giray. I featured one of these sculptures in my last video. Here we have a Curtis Giray Flock of Seagulls sculpture. C. Giray or Curtis Giray is a compound name of the two founding artists, Curtis Freilair and Jerry Fells, who combined parts of their own names to create the C. Giray signature. I almost bought this carved wooden basket for $32, but I just didn't think there was enough wiggle room to make a profit, so I passed. I've been looking for new necklaces, and I really want something with purple in it because purple's my favorite color, and I loved the brass in this, so I thought I would get this with the matching earrings for myself for $20, and I did. This space was amazing. Everything was like a dollar here. I almost bought this little wooden lidded jar, but I didn't. I thought this was just such a darling little lamp. I'd never seen one like this before, and it was only $5. It looks like they sell for a decent price, but even if it doesn't sell, it's just so cute. I wouldn't mind having it around. I spotted this Italian pottery owl bank for $5 and definitely got that. There's another one of those little boho trivets, but I wasn't crazy about that design. These inlaid candle holders, though, these are beautiful, but I wasn't going to buy them for $25 for the pair. I did buy some Oregon Myrtlewood ones a couple years ago, and I was burning candles in them, and I let them burn all the way down, and they started to catch on fire. So that's one of the reasons I'm so paranoid about wooden candlestick holders. But I figured out that you can get these little brass inserts, and so I got those and put them in my Myrtlewood candle holders to cover up where I burnt it and to protect the house as well. Lately, I've been slightly obsessed with embroidery, and I thought that this little framed embroidery piece for $8 was precious, so I ended up picking that up for sure. I didn't end up grabbing any more of these little framed cute pictures, but I should have grabbed that cute little embroidered bird. I'm disappointed I didn't get that. And that's a pretty cool floral painting there. These chairs are really cool. I thought that these were really cute little lusterware tea set pieces, but lusterware doesn't really sell very much anymore. I love these, like, oh, they're like cute so uh -huh. Ten dollars. Well, that wooden carf bowl is mine now, and Andra found it for ten dollars. And at this point, we were tired and beat and ready for lunch. It's a whole new world out here. So we stepped out into the daylight at around 11 o'clock a.m., headed for Portland to get some lunch. Since our next stop was going to be the Left Coast Revival's pop-up event held by our friend Laura Caldwell and her husband Jesse, we decided to go to a restaurant that was nearby. I'd never seen one of these Norwegian trolls before, and now suddenly it's the second one I'd seen today. How interesting. Check out those dollar horses too. Pretty cool. I'd never been to this restaurant before, but I was told I should definitely try the Swedish meatballs, and I'm very glad I did. They were delicious. Here we are at the Nordia House, which is a cultural center. We have this big troll on exhibit here. Here I am displaying my fantastic acting skills. Well, here we are at PDX Estate Marketplace, and we're here to see Laura's pop-up. So here it is. Here's her space. Look, she has a seizure flock of seagulls sculpture on the wall, just like we were talking about earlier. Sarah and I were with Laura when she bought this lamp in Silverton. Here's a little excerpt from my video. Here's Laura's Brutalist lamp. If you haven't seen her video yet, you'll have to watch that. 
I will put links to both her and my video in the description below. She had things priced to move at this pop-up. This amazing carved wooden vase was only $36. I absolutely love these candelabras for $125 for the pair. Look at her cute business card holder. I love it with the hands. It's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. What year were they? Jesse. I was filming the thing. She had to show the people, right? right? Oh, yeah, I'm still tired from the Northwest Rock. Largest graduate. Also. And I'm still tired from this morning from here. I know you too. So completely exhausted. I swear, I think my eyes are about ready to cross right there. Well, the rest of this stuff isn't from Laura's space. This is from PDX Estate Marketplace, and it's basically estate sale stuff. They have a huge warehouse where they put on a huge estate sale mixed with all sorts of people's stuff. I thought this brass toothbrush holder and towel bar were very cute. I would feel quite regal drinking out of this mug. Here's some Anna Lee characters. I have one little Anna Lee character that I put on my Christmas tree every year and my husband and my daughter do not like it. They think it's scary looking. This looks like a little vase. It's so cute. These are only $5. Well, here's my haul. First of all, I noticed this beautiful little Mexican folk art pin cushion. She was $4, but I got her for $3 because she has a little tiny chip on her wing. I think she's so beautiful. And my latest hobby has been embroidering, so I think it would be very cute to have her by my side with needles in her. She's not worth a whole heck of a lot, probably about $20 at the most. My next find were these two little brass mice. I just think they're so adorable. I had one like this when I was a child. Well, it wasn't mine. It was my parents. But it brings back the nostalgia of those memories. And I paid $12 for all three of these items. They were asking $5 each for the mice and 5 for the Tonala or Tonala Pottery Bird. But she gave them to me all for $12. Uh, my friend Andy from All Put Together got the other two mice that were at that space. They have the bent tails. So I was lucky I got these guys with the tall tails first. I got these two really cool trivet or wall hangings. We're not sure exactly what they are, but they're bohemian looking and wicker. And I just think they're so precious. They were $3 each and they gave them to me for $5 for the pair. I see these online listed for mm, I, some $20, $30, some $10. So we'll see. I think I'm going to try to hang them in my kitchen for a little while and then maybe see if I like them or not. And if I don't, then I will sell them. I got a little brass Cricut box for a dollar. My okay. friend Andre that was with me from Rose and Rain Vintage spotted it. And she actually was going to buy it for a dollar, but then she let me buy it because I was so jealous because I had one in my cart that I've been coveting. But I haven't yet pulled the trigger on it. So now I have this for only a dollar and I won't put real crickets in it because I think that's cruel. I'm going to put a little brass cricket in it, though. I think that would be cute. I found for $5 this brass whale oil lamp. I, apparently, they used to use whale oil in these lamps. And now people use mineral oil, which burns nice and clean. 
I see them listed online for about $30, so I thought that was a really good score. I paid $8 for this little embroidery, little framed. I thought it was just precious. I love how they used watercolor in the background. I probably would have used blue watercolor on the top and green on the bottom. So I thought I might try to mimic something like this, but I will probably end up having this for sale in my Etsy or eBay or even perhaps in my antique space. You can tell it's from the 70s because of the green. I found these ornaments. Uh, they were $2 each. I just love the embroidery. As you know, I'm an embroidery nut. And I thought I would keep one orange cat. I thought I would put the other three in my antique space because I need ornaments in there. I did buy this ornament, this vintage ornament for myself because I don't know if you've seen my other video where I talked about how I had all my vintage ornaments on the Christmas tree and the cat knocked it over and broke many of them. So now I don't put my vintage ornaments on the Christmas tree. I put them on a feather tree on my mantle so that they are safe, hopefully, from the cats. I was really, really excited to find this Italian pottery owl bank. And she only wanted $5 for it. And I see them online going for about $25 to $30. So I thought that was a really good find. Very happy with that. And then again, Andra, what a great scout. She found this uh, wooden card basket for $10. And she knew I'd been eyeballing another one for $32. But this one does have some yucky paint on it. But I'm sure I can get that off. But what a beautiful basket. I was really pleased with that. Here is Sarah's haul, and here is Andra's haul. I hope you enjoyed seeing what they got as well. Well, that's my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, maybe you can give it a like or a thumbs up. And if you like this content, maybe you could subscribe to my channel. And if you're already subscribed, I appreciate it so, so very much. I'm also doing membership now, so there's a link at the bottom if you'd like to support my small business and my channel. I'd appreciate that as well. Also. For my Etsy store, I have a promo code for 15% off the vintage section of my Etsy shop. It's called Yes Please. So if you're interested in that, you can go to my Etsy shop at Bridget Lefevre Shop. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.